Hey everyone, what's up? This is Simon from DevDectic and the Ionic Academy. In this quick win, I will show you how to set up uh, caching for your Ionic app uh, pretty easily because in general your app doesn't come with caching out of the box. So we have to use a little package, but it's really quite simple to use it. And I've already started a blank new app. Um, I haven't changed anything so far. Um, so let's go ahead and add our package, which is Ionic Cache, and it also uses Ionic Storage. So if Ionic Storage is not yet installed for your app, make sure to also install Ionic uh, Storage. But with most apps currently, Ionic Storage is already shipped out of the box, um, so we don't need to uh, change anything. First of all, we need to put two imports to our app module because we want to make HTTP requests. So of course we need Angular HTTP. And then we also need our cache module. Perhaps the auto import is working for me today. So add HTTP module and now also add the cache module. No, of course it's not for root. So this means we also have to add another import which comes from Ionic Cache. Okay, so this is uh, for including it to our app. Nothing has changed so far. Now we can use a few different options of our caching. So the first is to set some global caching using the cache service. So again from Ionic Cache, oh come on, okay, whatever. Um, we put it into our constructor and now we can use it, um, perhaps use it inside the platform ready because um, if you also install the SQLite plugin, the cache service um, will use Ionic Storage and Ionic Storage will use SQLite and it will only be ready once our platform is ready. So make a short story, a long story short, put it into platform ready. So now we could, for example, set our default time to live, uh, which means how long will our cache response be valid? Um, for example, this would be one hour. If you multiply it by 12, you get uh, cache results for half a day. Um, you can always change this for specific requests later, but it's a good idea to also set a general caching policy up here. Um, something that's also quite interesting is um, set offline invalidate. And we set this to false. And this means um, if we have a cached response and our device is offline, we won't invalidate it. So this means we can actually use our app offline and we will still be able to get the results from our cache even if they are perhaps invalid already because the time to live is over. But we can then use these results in the offline case, which is really um, quite amazing actually. Okay, so these are some settings uh, you can make at the top level. And now we will build a simple view um, to load and display some data and ex uh, experiment with the different options we got. So we need two buttons in our example, um, make them full. And the first button will load some films. And we will use the Star Wars API. Perhaps you know it from my uh, crash course. The second button will be used to um, invalidate our cache so we can actually see uh, how it works later invalidate cache and of course this needs the color danger because it's dangerous and below a list nothing really special here and we will iterate over an array of items and it will be an observable so we use the async pipe and just print out film dot, uh, I think it's title later. Additional, we add an ion refresher so we can use pull to refresh. And on ion refresh, 
we will call force reload. So with the event and inside we put the ion refresher. Uh, I think it's content and the refreshing text if you like to uh, reload from API. Okay, ion refresher content closed, ion refresher closed and our app should look like this. We can use it, but of course we haven't defined any functions by now. So now we can go to our home TS. We can close this and add the functions we already created inside the view. So we got force reload, we got load films, and we also got invalidate cache. Okay, fine. First of all, we need to put some imports here. So we need HTTP because we make HTTP requests. Um, it's always wrong, but I will use it like this. Okay. And then we need our cache, of course. Uh, cache, which is the cache service. And we also want uh, toast to be displayed once we load from the API. So this is just for um, our own debugging. So we add the toast controller, which is from Ionic Angular. All right. So um, two more variables. So our films will be inside an observable, the type any, whatever it's will be and make sure to import observable as well from whatever RHJS observable I think and now we got to something we need for our uh, caching um, so we define a film key um, this is optional but I will show you how to use this in a second so once we want to load our films, we first of all need to specify our URL. So this should be HTTP uh, swappy.co slash API slash films. Um, then we need to construct our requests. So this is still pretty much the standard uh, which we are used to and we also need to map our data and we will return uh, to JSON and also we need to access the results array directly here. Um, and now we also put in a toast message here. So we know that now we have actually loaded data from our uh, HTTP requests and not from the cache. So we add a message and it will say new data from API loaded, perhaps for a duration of like, I don't know, two seconds. So now we will see once we load from the API and once we're doing it now. And now we make use of our caching and just like normal, uh, we could use it like this. Um, I think it should already work now. Let's see. Um, because this is just a standard way and we load films and we see the title of our films. Um, of course, we should call toast.present so we know that we've loaded the data from the API. And most of your requests will look something like this. So we loaded new data loaded from API. If I hit it again, it will always reload our data. And now we want to add caching. So we don't set it to our request now, but we use our cache service and call load from observable. And we can pass in some parameters. The first two are mandatory, the second uh, two are optional. So first of all, this is a key under which the response will be stored. And a good idea is to use just our URL here. 
second the observable this is the actual request and now we already got caching in place so this is really super simple um, I call it once new data loaded and if I hit it again it's immediately reloaded and we don't get this again and we can go to our index DB um, and wait a second um, Oh, come on give me a second I can clear my site data once and now it should work hmm, perhaps if I refresh so let's see reload films and it should reload I don't know somehow this debugging tool is sometimes not working like I want to but now we got it and there we can see that under the key of our URL we got expire key, we got non-group key, we got a type and we got the actual value from the Star Wars API. And this is stored inside our uh, Ionic storage now. So all the time it will be just loaded from there without really doing anything besides using our package. Okay, let's go to the next step and we add our films key now. Um, so we use this dot films key and once we hit invalidate cache we call this dot cache dot clear group of this dot films key. So now we are able to force unload or clear our storage. Let me do it once again. open it and oh, come on it's not working like I don't know why it's not refreshing here so the index DB should be refreshed now but it's not showing anything I don't know so we see we got the object we're loading it from the storage all the time and if we hit invalidate cache and refresh we see the entry is gone and if we hit reload no we see we made a new request to the API and it's back in our storage. So by using this group key, we are able to directly change or invalidate our cache because now the entry got the group key and we can clear specific elements of our cache by using clear group with a key defined um, at the time we uh, load the observable and put it to our cache and then we can remove it later. Okay, more. Um, we have specified our time to live to be 12 hours and perhaps you say, I don't trust you. So this is not nice, but I can understand. So let's set our time to live to three seconds and we can pass it in as the last parameter here. So I think we need to uh, clear our storage once again. Mm wait for it and reload the films it's loaded again all the time cached but now you see three seconds are over and it makes the request again so we can override the general settings to have specific time to live for our own um, request that might perhaps need less or more caching now the final part is once we use our pull to refresh we want to make a force reload of our uh, API call. So for this we will put in a refresher here and once we call force re reload we will call load films and pass in the refresher because for once then we know we need to force refresh and also we need to call the refresher complete method uh, once we are done. So if refresher is set, we need to do something and force reload. And otherwise we just make this request. Um, I've used, tried to implement force to reload with clear group and calling then and making the requests again 
but the result was not really working that well. Some asynchronous task inside the cache uh, was not perfectly working for me. So if you encounter any problems that your cache is not cleared or the new value is not written, something like this, uh, make sure to check the asynchronous stuff here um, if there are any problems. So back to our if block, uh, we want now to make a force reload and therefore we set the delay type to all. Okay, doesn't say really anything, but now we assign something different and it's not load observable, but load from delayed observable. And we will pass in almost the same stuff like before. Again, we can use our films key if we like to. Um, there it is. We can use the custom time to live. And finally, we can add a delay type as a string and we use our delay type. And the delay type all means we will always reload or make the uh, request again, even if we already got the data inside our uh, cache. And this means um, that in this case, we always make the HTTP request and cache the result afterwards. Now we only need to subscribe to our observable here. Um, we don't need the data, but what we need is to call our refresher.complete. So in that case, we are then done. Back to our app. Uh, again, load films. It's making a request, load films again, no request. Invalidate cache and load films, request, now cached. And now pull to refresh and request was made. And it will happen all the time once you use the pull to refresh and it will be written new to our storage and is then cached uh, for later. So, um, I hope this gave you a quick understanding how you can implement caching for your Ionic app using the Ionic cache. Make sure to check out the GitHub package also for more information. So there are a few more options uh, to cache different results of your calls. Um, but these are the basic functions you need to cache something, to force reload it or to clear it. And if you like this quick win, make sure to subscribe to my channel and also go ahead and check out the ionicacademy.com for more Ionic training and everything you need to get started with Ionic and build your apps. I hope to see you next time. Have a great day and enjoy your code. Goodbye. <laughs>